Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Ed Guinness from the, uh, the um, NASA Planetary Data System Geosciences Node, which is based at Washington University in St. Louis. And I'm going to talk to you about ways in which we serve out data to our, our community. By no means does this indicate all of what PDS does. We are just one of about a half a dozen different discipline nodes. Um, so let's get started here, because as happened to Nicholas, <laughs> running out of time. Um, so uh, uh, some background on the node. Um, we're uh, focused on understanding terrestrial planets, their surfaces and interiors and dynamics. Uh, currently, we're working with uh, eight different active planetary missions, uh, also as is becoming more um, Common these days, uh, individual researchers, there's a number of different NASA research programs that are promoting the idea of, of individual researchers generating uh, highly derived data sets. Uh, so we're getting more and more data from them. Currently, we have about 165 terabytes of data covering several hundred different data sets going back all the way to the Apollo era. Um, and we're growing by about 10 to 15 terabytes uh, per year. Users are retrieving something close to, on average, about 15 terabytes a month, so we're moving a lot of data both into our system and out of our system. So given the size of the archive and the diversity of, of data sets, we go all the way from high energy X-rays and gamma ray data sets through reflectance and data sets and image data sets out to the microwave region. Um, these present challenges in, for us in terms of ways in which we can allow users to find the data they need. And then given the size of the archives, challenges in terms of moving the data out to those users. So the primary services we're involved with are, there's three of them. I'm only going to talk about the first two today for time constraints. The Orbital Data Explorer. Uh, is a system we provide for access to orbital data sets, uh, hence the name. And then the Analyst Notebook, which is uh, geared towards uh, landed missions, while we have some for Apollo and the Lunar L-Cross mission. Uh, most of those are related to Mars. And the concept there is to allow users to basically have not only the archive data, but ancillary information so they can essentially play back the mission and understand the context and reasons for acquiring the data. We also have a tool for uh, spectral libraries that are mainly community uh, um, uh, data sent to us. So first, the Orbital Data Explorer. It's a web tool um, that provides uh, searching, browsing, and downloading of data. We have individual interfaces for each of those uh, main uh, target bodies you see listed there. And on the right of this slide are the uh, different instruments we support. Uh, the bolded are, are active missions or, uh, let's see, or a recently ended mission, even though uh, many of you know Messenger crashed last week. Um, uh, but there's still data to be uh, delivered. Um, the concept here is that one interface, uh, like the PSA interface, provides uh, a way to search across different missions and different instruments. So if you're interested in spectral data of a given target, you don't have to do individual searches for different mis instruments or missions. Uh, you can enter your uh, parameters, and then the, the returns um, are independent of the, uh, the way the data were collected. The main components, there's a traditional form-based search, a map-based search. Uh, for certain data sets that are collected along track, uh, something we call granular uh, database searches, and that's a term I think uh, borrowed from the terrestrial remote sensing community. And then a REST interface, which allows users to build their own interfaces to, and tools to access our metadata and uh, so forth. Um, Data can be downloaded from this one tool, even if it's spread across the uh, PDS. Uh, if you're, you ask to download data through ODE, we'll go out and fetch the data from different nodes and, and present it to you. 
And we do that by harvesting metadata from the, the relevant nodes. So quickly run through some of these uh, main components, the search form, you specify the mission and instruments and other parameters uh, and so forth. And then you get uh, uh, a results page uh, where you could either uh, click on one of these to download it directly or do a checkbox to generate a cart and then download that way. We try to display browse images or some sort of, of uh, visualization of each product. That's not always uh, easy given the diversity of the types of data. And you can look at the metadata and the labels, PDS labels or um, documentation or uh, sometimes some ancillary information. Uh, the map based uh, is a uh, ArcGIS or ArcMap based tool uh, that allows you to basically drag a box around a, uh, a map of the given target and then we'll focus the search based on that uh, map. You could ask it to uh, display overlays of footprints. Um, so this is for the moon, uh, a lot of LRO data sets and the uh, Mini RF, I think, is checked, and the LROC narrow angle camera. So um, it will draw the footprints. Uh, those that are fine within the search box, you can control the transparency of the layers, which orders, uh, what the footprints look like, and which base map you want to display. Uh, you can then um, do searches based on characteristics of the data within this interface. And also, once you get to the individual products, click on a footprint to get more information about that product and, and add it to your cart. Uh, the granular database uh, search capabilities. So uh, I don't know how, how many of you folks have ever worked with data like the, the molar data set from MGS or the, the Lola data set. Those are both to topographic data sets. But basically, when an instrument is in a, a polar mapping orbit and it's collecting data along track, uh, oftentimes those products are organized and by time-based, and uh, so you get data for one day's worth of data. And that could be spread all over the planet because the orbit tracks are not close together. But the scientist is interested in data for a specific area. So rather than having to download dozens of individual products to get the data and then process them to get the data of interest, we have uh, uh, put most of that data into a database so you can query by location, geographic location or like with the diviner instrument, different uh, thermal channels or other observation conditions. And then it will go through and basically produce a custom product for you with just the data you're interested in. So you don't have to download dozens of products and process them. And you can get the data back as ASCII tables. Uh, if you want to import it into some other tool, you could kind of browse it by putting it into a binned image. Or for the GIS community, you can also ask for that data back as shape files. And the last uh, pr thing I'll talk about for the uh, ODE is uh, um, something we call the REST interface, which stands for Representative State Transfer. Basically, it's a protocol that you can uh, use to search our metadata without going through the web interface. So users can build their own tools uh, and applications for searching for data within our holdings. Um, and these are the parameters one can search by, but using the protocol of the REST interface and then one can get back either URL links to the products that they can then download, uh, the metadata, or browser thumbnail images. And we have, uh, if you're interested in this, um, uh, a website where you can uh, get more documentation. There's at least uh, uh, one group at Jacobs University. I don't know if. We do your history, but we don't have to do the Okay, yeah. So there's at least one group uh, here in Europe that's using that uh, REST interface, and you guys may have been the impetus for us developing this. Um, so um, moving on now to the analyst notebook. So those were orbital, uh, tool, a tool for orbital data. When we come down to the surface, um, it's a different sort of uh, uh, mission scenario, particularly for um, 
uh, a roving mission, and this may be applicable, you know, if you think about what you want to do for ExoMars um, uh, type of uh, search interface. So the idea when I say playback the mission is that for those folks not involved with the, the mission planning and so forth, to understand why data were collected, how different uh, images relate to in situ observations of targets, we try to provide this tool to help people basically understand the context in which the data uh, were acquired. And we do that by taking the standard archives, merging that with uh, special products, information on um, sequencing and documentation, not only about the format of the data, but the, the team notes on why they took the data and uh, team status. So a lot of words in this slide, uh, you can look at it on, on the, the wiki, um, but basically it's taking standard PDS archives, adding a bunch of stuff to it, uh, and to enhance the ability of the users to find and understand why data were acquired. I'll go through some of the, the uh, main components here very quickly. So this one is called the, the mission uh, summary page. And it's kind of a running summary and through short text of what was done on a given day on the surface of Mars. This is, for example, for MSL, Curiosity. And you could click on any of these SOL numbers if you say, oh, I'm interested in this target. Uh, go to that particular SOL and to something we call the SOL summary, or you could go to these directly. And you will see a summary uh, for activities for a given soil on Mars. You could read an overview of that day, look at a list of the data products involved, the documentation. Uh, we sometimes make custom mosaics and the targets involved. So in this case, um, so on the left is all that information I just mentioned. On the right here is where you could see uh, versions of data products. This is a ChemCam image uh, looking at a place maybe where the, the LIBS instrument uh, measured chemistry. Uh, and very quickly, using some of these buttons up here, probably not for this type of image, but if it's a, a multi-spectral uh, image uh, like the PanCam camera on the MERS, you could generate either uh, anaglyphs if it was a, a, a stereo image or a color image if there are, there are three bands were acquired. Um, you could also, within the SOL summaries, uh, do overlays of targets. Uh, those could be simple remote sensing targets or targets that were eventually uh, driven up to and in situ observations uh, done. Uh, so that's kind of a timeline, both the mission summary and the SOL summary are a timeline approach to looking at what happened with the mission. Uh, we also have a map interface uh, where you could see the track of, of the rover as a function of time. These are SOL numbers here. And the red dots indicate places where the rover stopped, which you can click on and then bring you over to the appropriate SOL summary. And you can pan and zoom this map to, to look at uh, uh, detail. Um, and then finally, you could also say you're looking for a particular target, uh, use a search page, or you want to find a particular instrument data of a target, um, you could use this. And this will search not only the metadata about the products, but it, it can be used to search the documentation. So every day there's a report uh, by a documentarian about the day's activities. You could search those or their weekly mission manager reports that kind of summarize over a week period what the, the, uh, the individual rovers were doing. Um, we've also begun to make uh, mosaics, custom mosaics. So here's a, a mosaic interface. Again, you can pan and zoom through this mosaic and actually see footprints of the individual frames involved and then go to the individual products. So it's a nice way if there wasn't a, a, a derived mosaic produced for the, a given set of observations to see all those little individual images put in their context um, and see the larger view of the surface. Okay, last slide, I don't know how I'm doing with time. Uh, um, uh, but kind of to summarize here, so um, 
we always welcome feedback and suggestions for uh, uh, additional functions from the user community. And I guess I don't have a specific slide, but I'll be interested in the track C data forum. So if you have any inputs of interest to us, so I see us as kind of the front end to science analysis life cycle. Here's the data, move it out to the, the uh, user community to eventually do their analysis. Um, so we, as I said, we welcome feedback. There are places on our websites where you could send us an email with questions or suggestions. We also go out to uh, meetings and, and hopefully talk with users uh, uh, for the same reasons. Uh, specific ways in which we expect to update these uh, two tools in the future. Uh, I know the form-based uh, searching capability is a bit uh, dated, and so we're looking at ways to improve that. Also, the map search is getting a little complicated as more and more instruments are added to it. Uh, so we're looking at ways to make that interface work better. Uh, for the analyst notebook, a big issue is how do you correlate target names? So if you name a rock X and you want to find all the data that were acquired of that rock, um, remote sensing data and in-situ data. Uh, we need better ways to, to tie those things together and we're looking at how to do that. Uh, we want to enhance our ability to uh, do some custom image processing for images rather than showing you individual bands of, of uh, mosaics and things like that. And then uh, allowing users to request that the data not come out in the standard PDS form, which is basically very simple may not fit into your research tool very well. But looking at ways we could provide data transforms to make it easier for users to work with it. And also uh, to allow users to set preferences when they're working with the analyst notebook to basically enhance their ability to uh, navigate through that system. So I'll stop there. Great. Thank you very much.